so some vaccinations will tend to cause more learning dis difficulties, autism. In, if I was in your position, I wouldn't vaccinate that. Yeah. We can have famines, we can have a massive war and kill billions of people, or we could just have a little innocuous vaccination and so mm. there's less, less babies in the world. <laughs> There's an evil genius to it. It's actually good for their immune system. Okay. And again... Even measles? Yes. Gosh, okay. Just, just trust me, please. Got the certificate. That was an undercover report by The Telegraph in the UK where homeopaths were caught discouraging mothers from vaccinating their children. Homeopathy is a hoax, and its practitioners not only exploit people, but in the wake of COVID-19 have come out as drivers of the anti-vax movement spreading dangerous misinformation. And that's why today, they're on Vulture Watch. Imagine you went to a doctor with a severe migraine and you were given a painkiller that was as diluted as one aspirin dissolved in as much water as the entire Indian Ocean. You would probably call this a ridiculous prescription, but for homeopathy, this is normal. Meet Jayesh Shah. He calls himself a doctor, a renowned homeopath, and a past life regression therapist, whatever that means. Here he is explaining how homeopathy works. Homeopathy is based on a nature's law, which is called law of similars. That what can cause, can cure in minute doses. One small tiny drop of rat's blood is taken and it is put in 10 parts of sugar of milk. From that one part is taken, and put in another 10 parts of sugar of milk and titrated. Then from that, one more part is taken, again titrated, okay? And then from that, it is dissolved in alcohol or water. And then from one drop of that, it is another 100 drops of alcohol or water are added and jerked. From that, again one drop is taken, in 100 parts or drops of water and jerked. Now, this would become five potency. Most often, the potency that you will get will be surely more than 30. You will get 30, 200, 1000, 10,000. You can imagine how much it is diluted. By that time, that substance is not there, and only the energy of the medicine is there. As it becomes weaker, it becomes more stronger. As it becomes weaker, it becomes stronger. So the very foundation of homeopathy is obviously irrational. So that earlier example of one aspirin in the entire Indian Ocean is no exaggeration. It's about 20x according to the scale they use. And as Jayesh suggests, most prescriptions are even more diluted than that. Now let's see how they try and differentiate themselves from real medicine. So in that way, homeopathy is opposite of allopathy. There the dose is powerful if more substance is there in it. Here the dose is powerful if less substance is there in it. Can you see the difference? Yes, I can. One makes total sense and the other is utter nonsense. Nonsense founded by 18th century German physicist Samuel Hahnemann, who also coined the term allopathy conveniently to try and create an impression that homeopathy is in some way equivalent or an alternative. Now let's see how Jayesh desperately tries to use science to buy credibility. There is a figure called Avogrado's number. Beyond that number in the dilution there is no substance. Okay, So these dilutions are far beyond, so they cannot cause any chemical side effects. Yes, zero side effects. In fact, there are no effects at all. The idea that water can hold memory or the essence of things without molecules themselves is completely unscientific and frankly idiotic because this would mean that all the water on this finite planet has to be inundated with memory. As wacky as these principles are, the real problems begin when patients get treated with these obviously flawed ideas. For example, I had one client who, who, who she said that her main problem in her life was she can't stop lying. And she quoted to me so many situations where there was no need to tell lies, but she had compulsion to tell lies. And then she had a lot of sexual feelings. Many aspects were like this testing. Are you there? Yes, I'm here and I'm trying not to laugh at the irony of a pathological liar seeking a homeopath for help. But uh, let's continue. But she had come to me with PCOD and no menses for three years. She had male pattern, hair growing and all this. Now this woman got one dose made from this rat's energy and the moment she got that, in three months her menstrual cycles became normal, her relationships changed, her habit of lying went away, her fears and dreams changed, everything changed in her life. Okay, now I feel like I'm watching an infomercial. 
Sweeping statements like everything in her life changed are called exaggeration fallacies and are typical of pseudoscience. The claim that super diluted rat blood fixed all of this patient's problems is a magical thinking fallacy. And to claim it without any evidence at all is called a bare assertion fallacy. Modern drug development is a long, painful process. There are hundreds of steps to follow, boxes to tick, and even then in the end, drugs often get rejected. But for homeopaths, apparently all you need is a cute anecdote or a magical story, and that's it. No evidence required. Say for example, you have constipation, and you take Dulcolax, milk of magnesia, whatever, body will recognize this as a foreign substance. Are you there or not? The first reaction will be the body will cause a diarrhea as a pathological chemical effect of what you are taking, right? But after some time, how will the body react to something that is causing diarrhea? What will it cause? Constipation. So after the effect of that milk of magnesia is over, you will become more constipated. You will get addicted to it and you will need larger and larger doses because the body is all the time confused. It is constantly producing constipation because the body thinks that this diarrhea is a disease. Okay, even as a layman, I know that's not how it works at all. So since I'm not an expert, I reached out to a couple of doctor friends of mine and this is what they had to say. Firstly, diarrhea is not a disease, it's a symptom. And doctors focus on the causes of symptoms and the causes can be anything from functional mechanical issues to diabetes to hypothyroidism. Each case is evaluated on an individual basis and medication isn't usually the first resort. As for laxatives, there are different types. Osmotic laxatives bring more water into your intestines, stool softening laxatives chemically break down hard stool, and stimulant laxatives work on your nervous system. Apart from the stimulant type, the others are safe to use long term, and all three of them will stop affecting you once they leave your system. Now, there is no evidence to suggest that using laxatives will cause reflex constipation, as Jayesh suggests. It is just a cheap, ignorant appeal to fear to convince you that you'll be addicted to drugs. So why do homeopaths make such bare assertions? Because if they don't create a problem that doesn't exist, they can't sell you a solution that you don't need. Like this. Whereas what a homeopath will give you, that he'll give you, say for example, in our Materia Medica, there is one substance called alumina. And it, is, it causes very hard constipation. So we give one dose of alumina, the body reacts to constipation. Then it produces a normal stool. It stimulates your life force in a right way. A contrary stimuli produces a secondary reaction which is opposite and which causes more disease. That's why you will need more drugs. Never it happens that your doses of thyroid reduce. Never it happens that your doses of blood pressure medicine reduce. They always keep increasing your diabetes doses. They always keep increasing, no? Till one point now nothing works. Okay, this is what's known as a package deal fallacy. So assuming it's true for constipation, apparently it must be the same with blood pressure, diabetes and thyroid dysfunction. This idea that dosage of drugs is always escalated is not true. In fact, many patients reduce their dosage based on positive lifestyle changes. It is just another pathetic appeal to fear. By the way, treating constipation with a substance that causes constipation is completely nonsensical. And homeopaths will ask, well, isn't that how vaccination works? No, vaccinations involve memory B cells, which enable a sensitized immune response when a pathogen is encountered for a second time. There is significant evidence for this. The reality is that the human body is complex and homeopathy doesn't understand or even appreciate this. And it has been proven time and time again to be completely ineffective apart from its placebo effect. The most comprehensive research on homeopathy in recent times was conducted by the Australian National Health and Medical Research Council in 2015. The research team considered 176 individual studies and 57 systematic reviews. They even invited homeopaths from around the world to submit any additional studies. In summary, the paper concluded that without any exception, and I quote, there was no reliable evidence from research in humans that homeopathy was effective for treating the range of health conditions considered. And they considered basically everything homeopathy was claiming to cure. So it's beyond any reasonable doubt that homeopathy does not work, period. So why is it still the most popular alternative to medicine? The unique selling point of homeopathy is the amount of time spent and the level of perceived care given to each client. 
A typical consultation with a general practitioner, an actual doctor, some estimate to be averaging around 10 minutes long. But homeopaths will spend one hour for their first consultation with half an hour sessions as follow-up. They diligently take notes on all the aspects of a patient's lifestyle and symptoms and really win the trust of the patient by just listening to them. This is a powerful antidote to skepticism. So when a homeopath tells a long-term client that they'll be cured, the placebo effect takes over in some situations, but in most cases, the ailments naturally subside with some lifestyle changes and the client wrongly credits homeopathy for the cure. And this is why it is so popular. In an attempt to understand the popularity of homeopathy when it comes to COVID-19, I went straight to the Global Center for Misinformation, also known as YouTube. So I searched for the terms homeopathy, both spellings and COVID, and recorded the top 50 results, noting the nature and the origin of the videos. I used incognito mode, of course, so my search history wasn't affecting the results, and this is what I found. 28 out of the top 50 videos claim that homeopathy is a clear viable solution to COVID-19. Now this is hardly surprising given the nature of pseudoscience. Since there is no evidence to bank on, they appeal to fear and emotion to attract vulnerable victims. But what's more interesting is the origin of these videos. An incredible 42 out of the top 50 videos were uploaded from India. So I started digging up a bit more and I found that the history of homeopathy in India is fascinating to say the least. And it undoubtedly has the most registered homeopaths anywhere in the world by some margin. Now, India is a secular country that has written in its constitution that a fundamental duty of all Indians is to develop scientific temper. Yet, it has an entire federal ministry dedicated to pseudoscientific medical practices such as homeopathy. It's called the Ministry of Ayush, and given its scope of work, it is by definition unconstitutional. Now let me take you on a little journey on the official Ayush website. Just for background, dengue fever is a viral infection that according to the World Health Organization can be lethal, but with proper medical care, fatality rates can be minimized. So let's see what the Ayush website has to say about treating this deadly virus. First, we're greeted by the Prime Minister himself. That's a good start. I clicked on About Us, then Ayush Systems, and finally Homeopathy. So here we have some guidelines for treatment of dengue fever. Okay, and if we scroll down, right here is the problem. A bunch of homeopathic drugs this document recommends claiming both prevention and cure of the virus without any clinical trials whatsoever. So what we have here is a government ministry directly spreading misinformation to the public by prescribing homeopathy on its official website and encouraging sufferers to effectively risk their lives by neglecting evidence-based medicine. This is what shocked me. Why is it that a country that gave us the number zero and made so many scientific contributions over the centuries propagating such nonsense? As I learnt more about this, I realised there are many reasons, but this might reveal one of the biggest challenges India faces in this space, leadership. Holistic healthcare is made in a very big place in the world. It has become a very big place. अच्छे से अच्छे डॉक्टर भी होम्योपैथी की ओर जा रहे हैं होलिस्टिक हेल्थ केयर का मूड बना है स्ट्रेस युक्त लाइफ में से स्ट्रेस फ्री लाइफ की ओर जाने के लिए एक मूड बना है और दुनिया को सही चीज कैसे मिले अगर हमारे पास है विरासत है तो उसको कैसे दिया जा सके उस दिशा में अगर हम प्रयास करते हैं तो हम अपना तो कल्याण कर ही सकते हैं लेकिन औरों का भी कर सकते हैं that was Narendra Modi back in 2014 in his very first year in office as Prime Minister, launching a hospital in Mumbai. It is fascinating that despite its German origin, homeopathy has become an integral part of the nationalist movement, opposing everything considered Western. And Modi's affiliation with homeopathy has some history. This video is still available on his official YouTube channel from 2012, where he delivered a half-hour address at the National Homeopathic Conference. <laughs> And here's the audience reaction at the end of that speech. <laughs> Modi's views on homeopathy should be pretty clear by now. So it comes as no surprise that in 2014, the Modi government elevated Ayush from a mere research department to an entire ministry alongside the Indian Ministry of Health. 
And Ayush is only a part of a toxic pattern of Indian politicians wrongly categorizing modern medicine as a Western notion in a bid to leverage identity politics and nationalism to their political benefit. Whatever the motives are, this level of anti-scientific policymaking at the top has two main effects. One is the growth of the anti-science market and two, the legitimization of misinformation, both of which work hand in hand to create a vicious cycle. The growth in this case is facilitated by legislation and funding. Over the last decade, federal Ayush budget has been ramping up and currently sits at over 310 million US dollars, within which homeopathy is allocated 38 million for the latest fiscal year. This is a gross misuse of the taxpayer's money. And to add to the problem, as government spent increases, so does private investment. Just as a small example, this company called Welcome Cure, an online homeopathic consultation firm, raised $6 million following the announcement of Ayush as a ministry. And infrastructure is not left behind either. This article from the Financial Express rightly suggests that the Indian government's initiative to establish more Ayush colleges will create a much bigger market. It also wrongly suggests to include an Ayush module in the medical degree curriculum. It justifies this stance on the back of Modi's statement that Ayurvedic remedies like drinking herbal tea can help boost immunity against COVID-19. Apni immunity badhane ke liye Ayush mantrale dwara jo nirdesh diye gaye hain uska agar hum palan kare garm pani hai kaada hai inka nirantar sevan kare That brings us nicely to our second effect, the legitimization of misinformation. It is a dark day for democracy when a random guy in a black t-shirt has to call out the leader of the largest democracy in the world on such a basic principle of biology. There is absolutely no evidence to suggest that changes in diet or lifestyle can have any immediate impact on your immunity, particularly against viruses such as COVID-19. The only defences against this pandemic are physical ones like masks, social distancing, general hygiene, and the only biochemical defence so far is vaccination. That's it. No amount of herbal tea will help you. Of course, once the Prime Minister released that video, every quack who had been quietly hiding in their burrows suddenly came out in full force. And wow, have we seen some A-grade drivel from the homeopathic community. Before the COVID vaccine came, there was a huge push for the homeopathic medication as the solution. But once the vaccine did come, the narrative shifted to how dangerous the vaccine is. See the Aish Mantralai ke mantri Shri Padnaik se baat ki. Suniye unka jabab. Corona virus jahan se shuru hua. Tabhi humare sabhi mantralai ke sabhi jo peti hai. Us peti mein te kya kya immunity badane ke liye jo humare paas jo kuch dawa hai. Ayurveda mein hai, Yunani mein hai, homeopathy mein. Yo humne... उन्नीस जनवरी को एक एडवाइजरी जारी की थी इवाला गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया सीसीआरएच सेंट्रल काउंसिल ऑफ रिसर्च होमियोपैथी वालू योग का मंदनी एडवाइज चेयरम जरिगिंदी भारत सरकार के आयुष मंत्रालय ने सलाह दी है कि आर्सेनिक एल्बम 30 का सेवन करें ये एक होमियोपैथी दवा है जिसे अगर तीन दिन तक लिया जाए तो कोरोना वायरस का संक्रमण नहीं होगा ये जो है ना ये इम्यूनिटी के लिए देते हैं इससे क्या होता है आपकी रोग प्रतिकारक शक्ति 100% बढ़ती है आर्सेनिक एल्बम 30 अगर दिन में दो या तीन बार उसको तीन दिन के लिए लिया जाए तो मैं सोचता हूं कि 99.99% केसेस में वो बहुत सफल होगी और ऐसे मरीज को कोरोना वायरस होने की संभावना नगण्य होगी देयर इज नो डाउट दैट आयुर्वेद और होमियोपैथी हैव अ बेटर चांस ऑफ हेल्पिंग वन टू बोलस्टर वन इम्यूनिटी टू डील विद सच इश्यूज as a child, I grew trusting Bajaj and I trust Rajiv and Rajiv trusts homeopathy. Right. So he offered this uh, medicine for all of our officers. Then I checked with my uh, two of my staff officers are homeopathy doctors basically. So they also endorsed. Then I said we have to go ahead. And we offered to all the staff in Pune Police Commissionerate. After Prince Charles uh, has uh, had homeopathy pills, there's a lot of buzz about how homeopathy may be the way out. All the flus and different kind of flus always use homeopathy medicine to boost the immune system so that the patient either won't get it or in case if they get it, it will be a very mild. 
a, a cost effective as well as without side effects and india's contribution to the world so the government will uh, i hope and pray that go forward yeah i hope so too let's hope india goes the same way and explore what we have native to our own the honorable chief minister of kerala shri pranay vijayan has announced using rsal 30 to be distributed among kerala public as an immune booster to combat covid 19 medicines like arsenic album medicines like gelsemium medicines like influenzanum these are medicines which are highly applicable in this pandemic and especially in covid and arsenic album 30 is a very safe prescription go ahead and use it previous studies mein dekha hai ki arsenic flu like symptoms jaise ki khansi zukam bukhar in sab symptoms mein bahut acha role play karti hai aur kahin aapki immunity booster bhi karti hai to agar aapki immunity strong hogi तो कोरोना आपकी बॉडी पे अटैक नहीं करेगा प्राणा दिस मोटर है ना एक्चुअली हम्म कनक माइंड लो ई 21 किड्स एवर शिशु लगे नो वैक्सीन मी इम्यूनिटी हरिन चलाने को होती है वैक्सीनेशन सो दैट इज द कांसेप्ट टू मेक योर इम्यूनिटी नल एंड वाइड इज गुड टू बी नल एंड वाइड मी नेचर अंत इम्यूनिटी मी किछ पंप इससे मीरो की शॉर्टकट्स एंड आई एम अगेंस्ट ऑल शॉर्टकट्स करोना पेशेंट तोड़ चाहिए गल भी अतन मुद्दा डे ये टेस्ट ले जाते हैं तो नोट लेके वहाँ उस राउंड पे ना माये ये बिट्टी वाला ना कितना आता चाहिए गर को पने ना बोल जाता हूँ There you go. I I don't even know how to respond to any of that. Despite Facebook and YouTube's attempts to bring down anti-vax content, still plenty of homeopaths out there spreading this. The best argument for homeopathy that I've heard so far is why oppose it if it seems to work. Well, that's the thing. It doesn't work. None of the hundreds of clinical trials have conclusively supported homeopathy over a placebo. Even if we ignore the anti-vax and the anti-science garbage, to claim that something works without evidence is misinformation, and to charge people money for it is exploitation. And this alone is enough reason to oppose it. Anyone who's an ardent supporter of homeopathy has probably not made it this far into the video. But that's okay because this video is not for them; it's about them. It helps to see them as victims, steep deeply into this absurdity, and most of them have made it a part of their identity, so they're unlikely to change at all. But every time they make a false claim, it helps to offer a strong, evidence-based counterargument, because as with most things, there are always those who stand on the fence. So this video is for those fence sitters and those among us who are frustrated at this nonsense and want to see a change. The global homeopathy market is set to triple between 2020 and 2028, with most of the growth coming from India. This means more misinformation, more exploitation, and more victims. The only deterrent to such growth is the action we take as skeptical, rational people. So, if a friend ever tells you that their homeopath cured their migraine, challenge them to prove that it wasn't just the placebo effect. Or if someone casually mentions that they used arsenic album 30 to prevent COVID-19 because it boosted their immunity, demand for evidence. No, you won't change them in that one interaction, and chances are they'll never change. But the next time they go to spread such misinformation, they'll think twice about it. Now that hint of doubt or hesitation you place in their minds might not be progress in itself, but it's the fundamental beginning of all progress. Thank you for watching. Vote to watch.